you doing? Justin here. Today we are checking out Honky Tonk Woman by the Rolling Stones. Great, great guitar part this one. Really good fun to play. It's in Open G tuning again. So if you're not sure about how to get to Open G, check out the link below this video and it'll take you to lesson on how to get your guitar in Open G tuning, okay? It's really important that you're in that first of all. We're not going to be playing the thickest string in this song, so if you really want to take it off and do an authentic Keith Richards thing, then this is a great song for uh, playing the old five-string Telecaster. Uh, let's get to a close-up and check out how to play it. So hopefully you've got yourself into open G tuning. If you haven't, please go and check out that lesson uh, that I've got on it, otherwise uh, all of this is going to sound pretty wonky. You need to be in the right tuning, okay? So uh, right at the beginning we're playing the middle two strings. Um, Okay, with the rhythm, three, four, and one, two, and three, and four, and one, two, and three, and four, and. Okay, so lots of offbeat stuff going on. I'm pretty sure that Keith's using his fretting hand to mute the strings in between, so you get this. You can kind of do it with your fingers as well. He often does it live uh, with this hand, kind of the fretting hand waving to the audience. You tend to get other strings ringing out, and you get a bit of finger noise and stuff like that. So I'm pretty sure on the record it's uh, muting with that. So three, four, and one, two, and three, and four, and one, two, and three, and four, and... It's kind of going down the beat, not exactly, but uh, that would be how you might want to practice it. That's the very first bit. Now we've got a lick. <laughs> I mean, this is one of the most famous guitar riffs of all time, I, I would suspect. So what I'm using is my third finger, my ring finger, to play the open E string, which is now actually an open D string. And then I'm using my second finger to play notes that are occurring on the third string and my thumb on the fourth string. So the very first part is a slide. I'm using my second finger to go from the second fret to the fourth fret on the third string. Okay, and it's quite short. So you want to get used to playing the note and then putting your fingers, the picking hand fingers, back on the strings. So it kind of mutes them again. Then it's a slide back. Then lift off that second finger, put it back on, take it off. And each time you're playing these two strings, you're playing the thinnest string and the third string. One, two, three, and four, and... Okay, just that bar again, it's starting on beat two. One, two, so note that beat three, it's a very fast slide from fourth fret to second fret. One, two, three, and four, and. Now we've got. Now some people play this as a, a slide up. I hear it as being a bend. Okay, so it's a second fret, uh, third string tone bend. And release. Then second fret on the fourth string, still with the, the uh, open E string, which is now the open D string. Open G, second fret, open, open. One and two and three and four and. So that whole riff, one. On to the intro, three, four, and one, two, and three, and four, and one, two, and three, and four, and one, two, three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and two, three, and four, and one. Two. So now our vocals in, we've got a little bit more of this uh, open middle two strings action, uh, starting on the and after three and the and after four. So. One, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, and four, and. Okay, it's a little bit unusual rhythm there. So the open strings again. One, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, and four, and. Okay, and after three is the open strings. 
slide up to the fourth fret with the third finger on the fifth string uh, on beat four, and then the open strings after that. Two, three, and four, and then we're going up to fifth fret bar. Okay, so I'm just playing the middle four strings here. I'm not playing the thinner strings, so it'll be thumb playing the bass note, fingers one, two, and three playing strings four, three, and two. Now I'm never 100% convinced myself whether it's this or I think it's these two fingers but never, yeah, can never quite decide myself so it's up to you which one uh, you want to play there. So I'll show you the full version but you might want to just use your second, put down your second finger and not your third finger um, depending on how you hear it. So once you've got the bar there, second finger is going to go down the sixth fret of the second string and third finger is going to go down the seventh fret of the fourth string. So one, two, three, and four, and five. Now note the little, there's a little stop by relaxing that hand, okay, the picking, the fretting hand. Just relaxing those fingers, but without actually lifting them off. get a, a, a kind of a deadening thing. Two, three, four. If you don't do that, it never quite sounds right. So often with these kind of riffs you want to hear about listen for what's being played and what's not being played, like where there's silence as well. It'll make a quite a big difference. So uh, that little section after the vocals come in from the open strings. So we had the Two, three, and four, and one, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, and four, and great riff again. Starting off the open G string, I'm playing with my thumb now, I'm using my second finger on the thinner string, wouldn't really matter what fingers you use. I'm sliding down from the fifth fret to the third fret then to the open B, E and G strings, the first string and third string. Then we've got the second finger, second fret, third string, bend, tone. Then off, so you're playing the first and third string again. Then second finger, second fret, fourth string. And then back to those open strings. So we've got the chord, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, and four, and one, two, and three. It's really important you get that rhythm again. One, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, and four, and one, two, and three, four, one, and two, three, and... Okay, now we've got the bar at the second fret. And we're going to hammer on those fingers just the same as we did for this other shape. But now we're down at the second fret. And then flicking them off as well. So picking on the and after one. So one and two, three and. One and two, three and. Okay, using thumb and all three fingers again to play the middle four strings. And then up to the seventh fret. Almost the same thing again. One, two, three, and four, and one, two, and three. So we're up to this cool little riff now. We're starting with the open fifth string. Then I'm using my third finger to slide from second fret to fourth fret. You could use a different finger if you want. That's just the one that's comfortable for me. Then we're playing the open third string. Then playing again the fourth fret. This is the fifth string sliding down to second. And then playing that fifth string open again. You can hear a really nice little fret buzz uh, happening on the G string as well. It sounds so great on the original recording. No idea how to replicate it though. Uh, so that riff is one, two, and three, and four, and. Okay, so the little slide there, very, it's, it's not a counted rhythm. Three, uh, one, two, and three, and four, and. Two, and three, and. 
three and four and one, two and three and four and one. Okay, so after this now the three and four and two and three and. Okay, kind of similar to what we had before, but we got the open G string on the and after two. Third finger sliding up to the fourth fret on the fifth string. Open G string. And this time when we're going up to here the four chord, we're playing the bass note first on the and after four, and the chord's coming on one. Okay, so one, two, three, and four, and one, two, and three, and four, and one. One more time a little slower. One, two, three, and four, and one, two, and three, and four, and one. Three and four and one, two and three. Okay, very similar to riff to the, what we've had before, but it comes earlier. Fifth fret to third fret slide down with the open G string. Then open strings again, first string and third string. The second fret bend on the sec on the third string. Open first and third strings. And we've got this little little riff. Open fifth string. Slide up to the fourth fret, probably with the third finger. It doesn't really matter. Fourth fret, the fifth string that is. Then the open G string. Let's go from just back before. Two, three, and four, and one, two, and three, and four, and one, two, three, and four, and one. Okay, it's a little. It's going to get a little bit tricky here, just for a second, uh, with the rhythm. Um, it's just ca getting this after you're done here. One, two, and three, and four, and one, two, and three, and four, and one. So the chord, the, the seventh fret, just coming up. That's falling right on beat one. But because this riff is finishing a bit earlier, or coming earlier than you'd think, uh, happening on the and after two, so. Three and four and one, two and three and four and one, two and three and having that this open string happening on the end after two as well and three and just makes that little bit just a little bit complicated to think about but uh, you know the best way again of course is to listen to the original recording and try and play along but second best for that is definitely to learn to count you know to have one two. Three and four and one, two and three and four and one, two and three and four and one, two and three. Okay, the last part. We've got a bar at the seventh fret, having on beat one. Then we've got harmonics, the twelfth fret on the fourth string and the third string. Sometimes I think I can hear one on the B string as well, but I'm, I've just had a really good listen to it and I don't think it's there. I think I must have been imagining it. So we've got those two harmonics and then fourth fret to second fret and then the open string. So one, two and three and four and one. Again, one, two and three. And then there's just a whole series of those middle two strings again on the off beats. One and two and three and four and. And there's some other guitar parts going over it at the same time, which I'll show you in a sec. Um, but it's really kind of uh, the key part is really just keeping it simple like that, and it, it actually sounds pretty good. So uh, I think that's pretty much the whole tune. So let me go through now and play you uh, once through, real nice and slow, from the top. Here we go. Two, three, four and one. Thank you. 
at the chorus now and there's quite a few guitars going on and I'm going to teach you what I think Keith is playing but I'm not 100% certain this is exactly right because there's quite a few layers of guitar going on it does get a little bit complicated but uh, I'm pretty sure he's doing this kind of thing <laughs> essentially a, it's kind of like a rock and roll you know swinging a little bit too much there but you get the idea now um what i think he's doing is playing the bass note with his thumb and using two fingers fingers one and two on the middle two strings and going one and two so this is all just open strings one and he, on beat two, he's just hammering second finger down on the uh, fourth string, second fret. One and two, and, and then another open string. One and two, and three, four. One and two, bass chord, and then playing it again. Sometimes just hammering. No, I'm definitely playing it. Same thing, more or less the same thing anyway, but this time I'm using the whole of that chord instead of just, I'm adding the, uh, the second string, so my third finger will be joining in on the action there playing the second string, so in open position, thumb fingers hammer on, thumb fingers up to the seventh fret. Same pattern we've been using right the way through the song. And now there's this funny bit. Now, there's a load of guitars all playing at the same time as uh, in this one little part. Uh, but I'm pretty sure this is what's going on. Thumbs playing on every beat. One, two, three, four. So it's thumb and fingers together, one, together again on beat two, and then an and where we lift those fingers off. One, two, and bass, back on, off. One, two, and three, and four. Okay, so on beat four actually they're all playing together. One, two, and three, and four. very last time instead of fingers one two and three playing strings two three and four they're going to play strings one two and three just for the very last note just that very last one there they just move over the strings got a riff the same as you should recognize it there might be some slight variations through the tune of the way these riffs are put together but uh, that's for you to have a little bit of fun discovering on your own so I said I'd show you a couple of these other riffs that are happening in the uh, gap between the verse and the chorus where Keith's just doing a little offbeat thing you know usually if I'm playing in a band uh, which has got two guitars in it um, I'll revert to you playing one of the riffs just because there's like four guitars I think at least on the original recording so um, this particular um, okay this is this is the 19th fret way up the dusty end on my old telecaster I've been up here for a while um, a tone bend then little finger going down on the 18th fret no 20th fret 17, 18, 19, 20th fret. Wow, I, could, I didn't even know I could count to 20. Anyway. So you do the bend. Then we're going to play the second string. A few times. So four times? God, I'm having a bit of trouble with this riff. Two. 
One, two, three, four. Four times we're going to play it. Oh, God. I'm having a senior moment. And then a little playing the two together at the end. Okay, and the, there's another guitar as well that's in uh, regular tuning. Okay, I've just switched to regular tuning as well for this other riff, uh, which is played by another guitar. It is kind of slightly possible uh, in uh, open tuning, but it gets really difficult. So uh, just in normal tuning, which you'd normally have in this in this situation if you had two guitars playing. One would be in open tuning, the other would be in regular tuning. Um, it's the other one you can hear clearly. Which is a 14th fret tone bend on the third string. Little finger going down in the 15th fret of the thinner string. Release the bend. Then little finger goes down 15th fret of the second string. Then you leave little finger down. Do a bend. Release down the minor pentatonic scale. Actually, it's the G major pentatonic. It's just in that little bridge, because that one, along with the... That thing, and the... And I think there's one more as well. It's a real kind of cacophony of guitars going on there. It sounds wicked, but uh, difficult for transcribing. Um, but yeah, a mixture of those things, and or just blast away on a bit of uh, major pentatonic and have a bit of fun with the band, see if you can do your own weaving. It's a funny tune, this one, because it's kind of... I've made it a bit more complicated than it really is by trying to count it. Um, because I know a lot of you guys really like me to, to count the rhythms of stuff, but with this tune, because of the, the feel of it, counting it becomes kind of complicated, but listening to it and just playing along with isn't. So, you know, I recommend it all the time anyway, but a really big deal is trying to play along with the original recordings, you know. By doing that and, and really listening to it properly and trying to play along and absorb that time feel, it'll really help you playing a lot, And because it, it's important. It's not just getting the notes right, getting the rhythm and getting the feel of the rhythm right is 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 probably more important than getting the notes right I think a lot of the time so uh have fun with it and I'll see you for plenty more lessons very soon you take care of yourselves bye bye